70% of Americans, according to recent data, want to be self-employed, but only 6% are. The reason that most people aren't pursuing it is because it's way harder than they initially realized. If you someday want to be your own creator CEO and run your own business, one of the best moves you can maybe make is to go work for a creator. 100 percent the right time happens, but it doesn't happen if you're not in the right place. So you got to keep showing up. If you aren't spending a portion of your week with intentional learning, you are limiting your growth. Ninety five percent of our success or failure is directly related to the Welcome back to the Think Media Podcast. I'm super fired up for this episode because really I think this content is gonna lift your entire life. I'm gonna be talking with an expert in careers, in side hustles, in earning more at your job, getting promoted at your job. But for a lot of people in our community, you've got a YouTube channel, probably a W-2 job. How do you balance the side hustle should you even ever go all the way into entrepreneurship or is there something about finding peace and freedom and fulfillment and purpose in really crushing it more at your day job while earning extra money on the side and how in doing all of this can we ultimately build wealth my guest today ken coleman is america's number one career coach best-selling author of the proximity principle Nearly 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. He's a Ramsey personality. And uh, his advice really talks about how to embrace a career that you love. But he's got a lot of stats and I believe practical information as we uh, talk to him today. Ken, welcome to the show. Great to be with you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me in your studio. Yeah, it's fun, right? You get to flip the tables. I kind of enjoy this. Yeah, I'm super fired up. We're here in Nashville, but I want to just break it down right up top. W-2 versus self-employed. Yeah. What are some of the pros and cons? There's so much of maybe an overemphasis, at least in the entrepreneur bros right. and sisters who are kind of like, <laughs> man, all that... You just got to be an entrepreneur. It's the only path, but it's also really kind of not what the numbers show. And it may not, may be kind of overrated. What are your thoughts? Yeah. On that? Uh, I love this question because 70% of Americans, according to recent data, want to be self-employed. Okay. They want to work for themselves, but only 6% are. And so there's a massive gap between what people say they want versus what they're actually doing. Now, there's a whole host of reasons why, but I'm going to tell you that then the data doesn't show this. But I've just coached 10,000 plus people, and I can tell you uh, with great confidence that the reason that most people aren't pursuing it is because it's way harder than they initially realized. And ultimately, they've made a decision to say, I actually don't want this. So what is it that they want? What's behind the data? I think what they want is freedom. They want autonomy. I mean, this is the human spirit. So you asked the question, the pros and cons of working for yourself. So based on the shadow of that data, let's go back to your question. Well, the pros are you work for yourself. The con is you work for yourself. Yeah. And this notion that I can be totally free and do whatever I want with my time is, is not a complete thought because you know this very well. I know this because I ran my own company for five years. I can do whatever I want with my schedule. But when I am the paycheck and there is no one else to rely on and I'm driving it, well, then all of a sudden I'm never off. It's very hard to turn your brain off. You were sharing so transparently yesterday over lunch of the pressures that you were feeling. And interestingly enough, the pressures from success. Mm -hmm. I, I wish the audience could hear that. I'm sure they've heard some of it. But I was struck by a reminder that you were sharing some of the turbulent times you were going through as a result of success, not failure. So that's the other side of it. The pros are, you know, there's no lid on you. The con is there's no lid on you. Mm. And this, this idea that if I go start my own thing and work for me, I'm going to be completely happy is not true. It's true for some, not true for everyone. So the coaching advice I give on this issue is there needs to be a deep problem, a problem that's deep in your soul that you want to solve. And so all of a sudden there becomes this beautiful marriage between the problem and the solution. So the reason you got into what you do uh, is because ultimately there was, you saw, I think I see problems out here in this space and I think I have the solution or solutions and can be a part of it. And so all of a sudden the, the marriage between, I see a problem that I think I can help solve 
and I actually have a solution and I want to provide that solution. When you get to that place, now you're at ground zero for being an entrepreneur and working for yourself because it's deep. So you're going to be willing to suffer. I use the word passion a lot, as you know, when I talk about work you love. But this is not just a romantic emotion. In fact, the root word of passion in the Latin is pati, and I love it because it means to suffer. You were, again, talking about your beautiful kids, and I've followed your journey for a long time. I've been through some of that journey. My wife and I went through that journey as well. And I just know, Sean, sitting here with you, that you would suffer all the way to death for your wife and kids. It's not a question. That's passion. And if you look at the great stories, and I love to read biographies of people, of, of uh, entrepreneurs, leaders, you know, histori- uh, uh, great men and women from history. And I'm going to tell you something. Every one of those people had a burning passion. They did suffer. They suffered mightily. And, and, and yet they kept going. So I wanted to take it a little deeper than just I want to work for myself. Eh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. But I think you first have to ask the question. I'm going to boil this back down practically. Do I just want freedom and autonomy? And then what does that look like in other areas of my life? And what I think is the professional solution, maybe it's not. Maybe it's some boundaries. Maybe it's better habits. Maybe it's busting it in your day job and getting free of debt. Mm. And the freedom that comes from having no debt may be the answer to the freedom that every human longs for. Jefferson learned this from John Locke and 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 all the great classical thinkers like Cicero and, 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 and Epictetus, and it was the pursuit of happiness. And I think ultimately that just means free to live the life I want to live. So what's driving this desire for freedom? If it is free to pursue this problem with this solution, mm. then yes, you are cut out to work for yourself. If it's not, then then don't go for it. Because you're going to be like the huge amount of people who say they want to be self-employed, but at the end of the day, they've tested it or it's just too scary. And there's not enough passion to move them from fear forward. I love this conversation because what I think one of the opportunities here is to maybe flip the narrative that you have to go all the way until self-employed. Yeah, right. And where... If you can tap into these places of self-awareness, mm-hmm. basically 100% of people listening to this podcast have a YouTube channel or want to start a YouTube right. channel. But the narrative might not be that you go all in and carry all the weight and have to do all the pressure and it turns into like this small or big business, but that I think there's this massive opportunity to have a W2 you love yes. and to have an outlet yes. for a side hustle. And there was actually a, a study I saw, there was an article that said our side hustle is part of the American dream. Mm. And according to a Zapier study, one third of Americans have a side hustle. At least 50% of millennials have a side hustle. The average side hustle earns an extra $12,689 per year. And I kind of want to come back to that because we yep. start looking at YouTube. You may not be a YouTube millionaire, most likely not. Right. But what are the practicals? There's all kinds of side hustle opportunities, but leaning into that, five to 20 hours a week is how much they spend on an extra gig. Biggest motivators for a side hustle is more personal freedom and extra income. Mm -hmm. And men are more likely than women to engage in a side hustle. So what do you think are the opportunities of starting a side hustle? Laying kind of the foundation that you really got to count the cost. Do you see the problem? Do you have the passion to really Mm -hmm. go all in on your own thing? versus what you've been saying in terms of millennials, your show, everything you're doing, of just the opportunity to maybe have a very fulfilling side hustle. Yeah. Well, you set this up beautifully. Let's just talk about the reality right now. Let's talk about money. Forget about passion and meaning. Let's put that on the side for a moment. The reality is we are in an American economy right now where inflation is not abating. It's not slowing down. And everybody needs more money right now. I don't care who you're talking to. They're going, I need more money. Like, my combo meal costs more. My kid's tuition costs more. Uh, vacations cost more. I mean, you just go down the line and the media, major media is reporting this. So you have to ask the question first and foremost, is the side hustle short term mm. or is it long term? All right. That's the, that, you know me, I love questions. I think questions simplify everything. So ask yourself right now, if you're watching this or listening, is my side hustle a short-term solution or is it long-term? Okay, let's break it down. Short-term, I love the data you shared. Okay, you talk about if you could make, you go out on the street, you and I took a camera crew out on the street in Nashville today and we walked around and I said, hey, let me ask you a question. 
this is my guy Sean. The guy's a YouTube expert. If you could make two thousand dollars a month extra just on YouTube because of my guy Sean, would you do it? What do you think the answer would be out of ten people? I think they'd say ten out of ten. Ten out of ten. If we just kept it to yeah, you do whatever the crap you want to do on YouTube. Yeah, and Sean's gonna get you to two thousand dollars a month. You're not gonna be a millionaire. You are gonna be a household name. But you're going to make $24,000 extra income this year. I'm telling you, if you just keep it to not being an influencer, not being famous, yep. and you just go, this is a side hustle I can do at my house, and I can make $2,000 extra a month, I'm telling you right now, people would go, sign me up. So that's okay. That's honorable. Totally. That's freaking great. In fact, I'll be honest with you. If you look at the side hustles that people have, the, the hottest side hustles right now are usually some type of a professional skill that you're freelancing with. So maybe you're a copywriter, as an example. Maybe you do coding. You know, you could do very well depending on what kind of skill you have. And then there's the driving in the car, the Uber, the Uber Eats. Now, understand, there's nothing wrong with that. It's honorable work. But you think about the time and effort, the wear and tear on your car versus doing it on YouTube, it's an easy exchange. So the point that I'm making is you first ask the question, is this the short term? I just want more income to get out of debt, have some margin, go on our 24th anniversary trip, whatever it is, short term. Great. That's awesome. That's more jingle in the pocket. Okay. So, but if the thing is, well, the answer is I, I actually, I'd like to see this go from side hustle to full-time dream or work for me. So if it's now it's long-term. Okay, great. So now our focus needs to be, let's crush it in the day job because that's our foundation, that's our stability. And let's take the pressure off the side hustle. If it's a long, like, even if it's, if it's short term, it's like, well, there's no pressure. If it doesn't work, I shut it down and I go drive Uber or whatever the business is. But if it's long term, I want people, Sean, to take the pressure off of it and go, this isn't going to be my main income for a while. This is going to take some time. I'm just going to do this because I. it's an outlet. It's a creative outlet. It is a way for me to express myself. It is a way for me to, to keep hold of my identity. If I'm over here in this day job and it's like in a cube and I'm doing TPS reports, but I get to come home and eight to 10 hours a week, I'm doing this thing online. I'm creating. I love that you talk about creators. I think every person on the planet is a creator. Some are more creative than others, but I think it feeds the soul. And so I want to encourage your, encourage your audience to say, yeah, keep doing it, because if nothing else, it could be the thing that keeps your heart engaged and keeps it alive as you begin to transition. And so we take the pressure off. So now we're just doing the YouTube channel for you. You're doing it for you. Mm. You love the content. You care about the content. And this is a big old world out there. There's a lot of people out there that like the same stuff you like. And I think if you make it about the joy of creating, um, then I think you've taken the pressure off. And now we give ourselves a chance to let the Shans of the world teach me. And I keep putting it out there and I keep putting it out there and I keep putting it out there. And all of a sudden, 10,000 hours becomes really approachable. And now I can do it well. And so I think you you have to go, hey, if this thing turns into my full-time income, woohoo! right? Or my Mickey mug. Oh boy. <laughs> you know, but, but, but if it doesn't and it's kicking off 500 a month or 1500 a month or 5,000 a month, then, then great. And I want to give a quick example of this. You probably know this couple, but I, I interviewed this couple on a zoom call just to learn about them about two years ago. And they, they started, uh, flea marketing and, uh, they were flipping stuff, right? Flea market flip kind of stuff. They would go to yard sales and all stuff. So anyway, they got good at it and like got really good at it. Yeah. And it was to save money and get out of debt. Well, they got so good at it that they got out of debt and they were making really good money. I think they were making about $400,000 a year. So the guy, the husband, comes home one day and he, he's always messing around with video cameras and stuff. He's like, you know, I think I'm going to create a YouTube channel and I'm just going to tell people how we did it. Well, that, that blew up. And they were making over a million dollars a year on YouTube telling people how they made $400,000 a year. Mm -hmm. He didn't he didn't go all in. He just turned the camera on and went, well, today we went and bought a stuffed rabbit and found out it was worth about 20 bucks. We got it for $2, sold it for 15 and blah, blah. And people were like, oh, I want to do that. Mm -hmm. So uh, they created content that they cared about. 
and it ended up helping a lot of people and now they're millionaires. And I think that journey needs to just happen organically, especially as a content creator. Keep doing content that moves you, makes you laugh, makes you cry, makes you angry, whatever it is, if it moves your heart, your audience will eventually find you. Imagine being in the room with some of today's top personal brands, video marketing experts, and online entrepreneurs. This year, you will have that chance at growwithvideolive.com. Grow With Video Live is the number one conference for building your personal brand and growing your business with online video. This year's speakers include Dave Ramsey, Pat Flynn, Shalene Johnson, the Think Media team, and many more. So go to growwithvideolive.com to get your ticket today. Your audience will eventually find you. Now, you gotta be okay with not all of us have, you know, the big audience. You and I are in that space. We're surrounded by people that have bigger audiences than us all the time. You can't get caught up in that. It's got to be about the love of the creation. There's a lot of insights there. I want to come back to some of the benefits of a site hustle, but first hit, how can we now, if our job is going to be the foundation that's going to help us get there and actually triple down on your job because that's your stability. But even before that, you broke down a framework and that I want people to kind of take away. That's interesting. I think one of the biggest mistakes I see for people starting YouTube is they kind of, they still don't really have clarity and they may, they haven't clarified the skill or the value proposition or what it is. I think you just broke something down. One, side hustles is a big trend. Yeah. Two, your side hustle could be furniture flipping, ride share, something like that. And if you go do the thing first and succeed at it, then your YouTube niche yes. could be teaching how you did the That's thing. Right. What you just broke down with that couple is such a model. Like if you don't have the thing yet, the conviction or the authority, go get that mm -hmm. by maybe doing, and, and it very well could be, wait, so I don't know what my niche is on YouTube. Well, your niche could be furniture flipping, which is a slower process too. I like how you said, slow it down. Yeah. You know, go through this process, your job stability, you're doing the side hustle. There's maybe proof of concept there, but that's also a real creator economy model. Sometimes it gets criticized like, oh, wow, you're making more teaching how you did it than you were doing the thing. But I don't know. I mean, haters can hate. Yeah. It's just, it, it's the proof's in the pudding. The though. proof's in the pudding. It's still, and that's still a very ethical way to serve people. Because again, if you learn something and put it in a book, you can sell the book a hundred thousand times and you made more than the thing you learned. It doesn't invalidate it. Assuming you've got legitimate authority. That's correct. You actually went and got that authority first. So I know somebody listening to this could really benefit. It might slow down your role a little bit, but you taking a year or two mm -hmm. to go get the authority. And we've seen that happen. Take a year to figure out to learn another language. Yep. And then you start a YouTube channel about how you learned another language or right. how that could be relevant or learn a little bit of coding or learn copywriting right. and then a YouTube channel about how to earn extra money copywriting. Just an interesting one, two, three step. Any thoughts on that before we pivot to this next thing? Yeah, just to validate what you said, you know, uh, some of you are, are starting to get some success and, and now you're starting to get in your head a little bit. And I would say that uh, the audience is the authority not the critics. Mm. Outside of this studio, you saw a gigantic, I think it's eight by 10 painting of Teddy Roosevelt. And it says, the critic doesn't count. It's not the critic that counts. It's from his famous speech, Man in the Arena. And I think, uh, I, I love that you hit that. It's like the audience is the authority. They, they get to say whether or not your stuff works. Mm. You know, I don't care if you've got 10,000 hours, if you've done it for five hours and you figured out a way to do it and you start talking about it and it helps people, believe me, you're helping them or they wouldn't come back. Wrong. So I think I would hold on to that. And then what I would also say, I want to get back to the core thing because you did ask me about this. When we, there's a tension between day job and dream job or day job and side job, and that's a healthy tension. And I want to point out, you've got to do what you have to do so you can do what you want to do. So you're going to have to be disciplined because man, you start creating you start getting that dopamine hit of people coming back to your videos and all that. You can speak to that very, very well. Um, you got to be careful because the heart man can just go whoosh, take your head off of what you have to do. So do what you have to do. That's the day job. Crush it. Be focused. Be grateful for it. Switch your mindset to not, oh, this is no fun to no, this is my livelihood. I am grateful for this. And, and then do your, do your job, crush it, do your job. Bill Belichick used to tell the Patriots, do your job. It was three, three, three words, do your job. And, and, and then 
when I'm not at the job and, and I've got time for the creation, give you give everything you got there too and be patient. Because those who are patient, it's the number one skill in the world. The number one skill in the world of professionalism. I'm just going to tell you. It's because there's always a tension between I got to persist, I got to get up, I got to make the videos, and I'm waiting for them to boom. I'm waiting for them to go viral. No, no. I get up every day and I make the video, I make the content, I post it, I learn, I get better, and then I wait. Those that are patient, they keep showing up in the right place, which is on the YouTube channel. I will tell you, Sean, that I believe the right time happens, but it doesn't happen if you're not in the right place. So you got to keep showing up. And so grabbing that patience, that's an encouragement I want to give to your audience. So this is strong. I want to, again, further talk about the side hustle. But if we break this down kind of in what I'm hearing you say, you see that you're going to need to be patient on your side hustle. Yeah. Maybe some days it becomes your full-time thing, or if you're able to find balance yeah. and boundaries and an extra $2,000 a month, that that can not just chip down your debt, but could, you know, set up your kid's future, right. give you kinds of experiences and travel and this ex expression of passion where you love both. But the first thing, hey, get your job right. Mm -hmm. Earn more at your job, have better boundaries or more fulfillment in your job. What are some tips for not getting so distracted by the side hustle, letting it maybe even reduce your work performance, but increasing your earning potential at your job and maybe the thought place of, you know, just honoring your boss, honoring yeah. your career and yeah. maybe pulling more freedom and purpose out of your day job. Yeah. Well, I love that. And I, and again, I touched on that a minute ago. I, I do think you start with what's the purpose of this day job that I don't really have any juice for. Well, again, it's, it's, it's fundamentally your provision. Mm. So we go, all right, it's not where I want to be, but I'm grateful for it. And I mentioned that a second ago. Then I'd add something else. I would add a, another element of I'm not going to be here forever. So we first start with gratitude that it's providing for me. So I'm going to do my job and I'm going to honor my leader and I'm going to do the best that I can do because at the end of the day, they're paying me. And if I'm not doing my best, if I'm a quiet quitter and I might sip on some toes here, then I'm stealing. I think it's theft. So let's have some honor and and know that showing up to that day job that you have no juice for, but you do have gratitude for, that builds character. That builds resilience. It really does. It builds adaptability. These are some real character traits that showing up and doing your day job really can build. And then that second element is this. Okay, Ken, I get it. I'm being grateful gosh, I'm, my heart's alive when I'm over here on my channel and I'm starting to make money. I just, oh, if I can just make $8,000 a month, I replace my day job. Because that's $100,000 a year, roughly, right right below $100,000. So uh, here's what you have to do. You have to go, okay, I'm not going to be in this day job forever. Not only am I grateful, I also know, hey, I'm doing what it takes over here. I'm not going to be here forever. I'm not stuck. In other words, I don't have a lid on me. I think if you do those two things, you'll have the right mindset. Because then you're grateful, first of all, so you don't walk in going, oh, I hate this job. You can't hate something you're grateful for. In fact, when you are expressing gratitude, whether to someone or you're journaling it or you're talking to yourself in the car like I do, you know it's impossible to be grateful and angry at the same time? Try it. Mm. You can't do it. But, but more than great gratitude, it's just, wait a second, I, I'm not going to be here forever. I'm not held down. And see, this gets back to the, one of the first things we were talking about, this, this idea of the freedom to pursue happiness, this, this desire that the human spirit doesn't want to be caged. And so if you do those two things, mindset-wise, uh, I think you'll be fine in the day job, and you'll do what it's necessary there, and you're not going to be you know, all drained by the time you get home to get on your channel, because that's important. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I'm glad you brought this up. Uh, those two things should help your heart, and this is a heart issue, should keep your heart truly joyful to where I'm able to create. I can leave the day job and in the car, I'm not down, mm. I'm not broken, I'm not defeated, I'm not miserable. I, I'm going, okay, good day. Did what I needed to do. Thank God for that paycheck. 
oh, I can't wait. Now my brain is free to think of the next video or the idea. And you know that's important as a creative. Uh, my heart has to be in a good place to create. So strong. Let's talk about some practical questions an employee should ask their boss. Okay. What are some questions every employee should ask their boss? I talked to one creator who's in software. Mm -hmm. He actually did not share his name on his channel because it wasn't that it was against the company's direct policies to have a side hustle, but it was kind of frowned upon is what he said. So he just did it in such a way that it was separate and there was some boundaries there. And so what I guess I'm bringing up here would be if you're reverse engineering from the problem you're trying to solve, if you just want to earn more money, maybe you could earn more money in your day job. Mm -hmm. Maybe you want more freedom in your day job. How could you approach that conversation? I think people are afraid to approach their boss. They questions. are. And then also, though, should there be some questions that you inquire? Uh, maybe it could it could you could run into some compete things, non compete mm -hmm. type of stuff. Yeah. So if we also start thinking about the tension between day job side hustle, mm -hmm. what is you're the questions guy? Yeah. So maybe a list of questions that after listening to this, everybody should go talk to their boss. They yeah. got a W two, and after on the other side of this conversation could be more freedom, more yeah. clarity, maybe. Maybe they feel like it's a gray area and they just want everything to be out there transparently yeah. so that they could love their side hustle, love sure, their day sure. job, see maybe a path to earn more at yeah. their job. Yeah. The first question that pops up is to me or to you all, you need to ask yourself, is what I'm doing competitive or is it a conflict of interest? First question. Let's start there. <laughs> I mean, because if it is, then we got some life change that we're going to have to make at some point. All right. And so if we need that paycheck and we're not going to do this right now and risk it. Yeah. All right. So let's start there. Okay. Because if the answer is no, then this will help with the confidence issue of, of walking through what conversation do I need to have with the boss? Because I don't want us to be fearful as we walk through this process of, do I need to talk about Because if I'm fearful, it totally changes my own answers. But if I'm not fearful, and I think you start with, with no fear, if it's okay, it's not competitive in any way. It's not in the same space as my current company. And it's not a conflict of interest. So, okay, no, no issue there. Okay, great. So, you know, this gets to be, a gray area for some, to me, it's black and white. Yeah. They don't control your life. Yeah. Now, I'm also aware of authority and I appreciate authority. And if they have a company policy like the suggestion or like the example you gave me, uh, then I would say, okay, um, we got to sit down and now ask the question, how risky is this? If I realize that it's truly from a moral and integrity standpoint, not a conflict of interest or competition, but there's a company policy that says you can't have a social media channel and it's it's pretty clear, then you got to go, all right, what's the risk here? Because from a standpoint of moral and integrity, you can make all the case you want to and they can go, yeah, we agree. But we also said, and our lawyers told us, this is our policy. So I'm sorry, you're gone. So you got to assess the risk. So how risky is it is, this, is the second question. Um, if that's not in place, and there is no corporate policy by which they could effectively fire you or punish you or shut you down, uh, now I'm even more confident. And now it gets to, um, do I need to tell my boss is the third question. Mm -hmm. If we've gotten through those first two, do I need to tell them? Some people always feel compelled. Uh, and by the way, this is fear-based, not picking on anybody. I'm the opposite. If And let me put myself in this situation. I have a very different, so I can't do this at Ramsey. I'm saying if I'm not at Ramsey and I'm out there and I'm working a day job, if my answers to those first two questions are no and no and there's no risk, my the answer to that third question is, heck no, I'm not telling my boss. What do I need to tell them? Yeah. I mean, if I was driving Uber? Uh, now, again, that's I've walked through this. I'm being responsible. If there's no corporate policy that lawyers, you know, so if, if it's those questions and those are the answers, then I'd say don't tell them. If, if it's so clear that you can't do it, you can always sit down. I'm always in favor of going, hey, so here's what the corporate policy is. Here's what I'm doing. I'd really like to do it, but I'm going to honor the policy. I'm being transparent. Is there an exception here? Do you wink, wink it, boss? Sure. What do you have to lose? Yeah. What do you have to lose from having a conversation? Yeah. So then I love this because also as, you know, we have like a team of 30 people, W-2s. Right. 
So also trying to create a cool culture. And one of the things I value most is just transparency, vulnerability. I want to know mm -hmm. what your vision is. Yeah. What is it you want to do? Let's yeah. talk about it. And if we have a policy, let's process that together. Let's talk about it. But I think also, and absolutely do your side hustle and do your thing after hours. I think mm -hmm. it gets interesting if maybe it, the next question, talk about this, how could I do better? Or do you feel like I'm actually pulling my weight or do you feel, because actually about the only time your side hustle hits my radar is much more like you're kind of, I can tell you're slacking. I can, tell, I can tell you're distracted. You're nailing it. I can tell maybe even too, if you can stay focused and you can perform, I, like it's also, I don't care what you do on the weekends. That's oh, not my right to care. I got to tell you, you're right. But if you come in Monday dragging because whatever your weekend decisions were, well, now it's a job performance issue. So what are some other questions? Then it's also, because it's always on that foundation. If you mm -hmm. want to have that real freedom, even as you're doing your side hustle, if you dishonor your employer or your work performance yeah. drops, you put your job in jeopardy. So yeah. then later, maybe some questions to just be thoughtful about not only maintaining your job, but questions that I think a lot of bosses would want to hear. Yeah. Hey, how can I do better? Can yeah. you give me some feedback? What are some symptoms? Yeah, I love that. I, I love I love uh, focusing on, hey, uh, in my current day job where we've already established in this conversation, we got to keep doing a good job. So I love the, hey, what's a growth plan look like for me? This is my favorite question mm -hmm. for, for people to sit down with their leader because a lot of companies don't do uh, weekly or monthly check-ins. They may do an annual. But I love sitting down with my leader going, okay, hey, I'd love to get your insight. So here's some questions I have for you. Number one, where can I where can I add some skill? So if you look at me and my skills as a tool belt, are there a couple loops on here where we could use a claw hammer here? You know, maybe a Phillips head. That idea, because that's speaking from a place of humility. And I think vulnerability, and they're going, okay, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, you're really good at these things, but I'd love to see you pick up this skill of project management. Okay, great. Because now... It's like that leads to the next question, which is, is that something the company would be willing to reimburse me or pay for? Or is that something they pay for myself? You know, uh, and, and so this is great. The second question is uh, along this idea of where can I is, is what what are some areas where you see me as weak? And and I so the other one is adding skill. But then where am I n not so efficient? And, and if they tell you that again, humility and hunger is so attractive. But then it leads to another great discussion, which is, yeah, I mean, I don't know that I've got this, the natural skill there. Mm. We like putting Ken Coleman in a detailed organizational position. I mean, disaster. And so if they say, Ken, you're just, you, you, you're, you struggle with follow through. And I go, yeah, I do. I always have. So my teacher said, I'm a great starter, terrible finisher. Um, hmm. Is there somebody else on the team? Like, there's some roles I can pick up. You, know, you see, and it begins to go, oh, and the leader goes, oh, and so you kind of lead your leader. That's a fascinating question that you that you bring up, but I love that, right? And so this is all about winning in the day job. So all of this is built around them going, okay, I want to invest in them, and, 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 and they want to get better, so here's what we're going to do. And then you say to them, okay, I want to get better. How do we measure that? And will that lead to a promotion? Come on. And so we've never talked about a raise. We talked about how can I get better? What are, you know, and then and then how do we measure that? Because I'd love more responsibility and influence here. And with that comes the money, or it should. And if it doesn't, you know, this is not the organization for you. So I think that's a really helpful thing. But I, I would also say it, it triggered another thought. And, and that is, you've got to understand that your ability to compartmentalize growth here in the day job and growth over here, they're two really different journeys, but they can help each other. Growth over in the side hustle? Yeah. Yeah. Like, it, I, it's, I love that you're going, okay, what do I do in that day job? Because if I'm growing here, okay, uh, while what I've got to do over here is different, they are two different growth tracks, but they feed off of each other. Yeah. You, if your side hustle will level up your day job skills. It should. It, it should. make you a better leader. It should. Make you learn new yes. new challenges, maybe some yes. emotional intelligence. And watch this. If if I'm getting promoted in the day job, guess what I got more of to invest over here? So I love that you're focusing in on this because I think people forget that our basic income at our day job is our greatest wealth building tool. It's our greatest vehicle for investment. And we're talking about investing in us. Mm. Uh, so I, I love this direction. I think it's important. So you really got to be disciplined and keep that present focus while I'm 
So it's an eye on the future, not total. You know, because if we become obsessed about the next, we miss what we need to do in the now. Mm. If we obsess about the next, we miss who we need to become in the now. If we obsess about the next, we miss who we need to learn from, connect with in the now. And so it is winning the now, Sean, that always sets us up to win more in the next. Would you like a free copy of the number one best-selling book for growing a successful YouTube channel? If you wanna get a copy of the new and expanded second edition of YouTube Secrets, just go to ytsecrets.com. And if you'll cover shipping and handling, I would love to send you this book for free. And the cool thing is when you place your order, you're also gonna get access to some bonus resources like our 1,000 subscribers club, our seven C's framework, our perfect video recipe framework, as well as some bonus videos that will help you get results on YouTube faster. So to get your copy, just go to ytsecrets.com or click the link in the podcast show notes. That really inspires me to talk a little bit about the proximity principle. Yeah, I I've noticed it. this with some, maybe they are self-aware that they're entrepreneurial. Mm -hmm. They know and that might be rare in and of itself. Maybe you, you think you are, yeah. you're maybe entrepreneurial. I think that self-discovery journey is interesting, but I, I, you know, I'm 40 and I really served in a local ministry, yeah. built my way up in a church as a director of communications. And when I heard about you talking about the proximity principle, which I want you to define in, in a mm -hmm. bit here, I guess my mindset was, was seeing that how can I get in an environment where I can grow as a leader? Mm -hmm. How can I be not so quick to rush out and just think I can do it on my own, but to absorb as many skills as I can from those around me? And more power to a 19-year-old who thinks he's going to be a startup founder. But on the flip side is that sometimes, I've, no, I've observed this now in the creator economy, especially people in their 20s, I'm not trying to pick on them, but I've seen their businesses implode or their lives implode as they've had some success, started mm -hmm. to start growing something, rented some office space shut it down, shut their business down, heard about a lack of fulfillment, maybe good marketing and charisma on the front end, lack of fulfillment on the back end, because sometimes you're just lacking skills. And this whole idea of maybe you're just so focused on the next, the next video, the next going viral, the next thing, and you're missing the now, mm. the proximity principle with this idea, it, it, tell us what it is, yeah. but this idea of Maybe before, if you someday want to be your own creator CEO and run your own business, one of the best moves you can maybe make is to go work for a creator. One hundred percent. I call it the free education. Okay, so break the break this In down. Other what words, is the proximity? They pay you yeah, what's, what's the proximity principle, yeah. and how can people so tap into that? So let me let me give you the data that makes the principle powerful. So the data is not Ken Coleman's opinion. This is Harvard University, the longest study ever on relationships and the power of relationships in our lives. Mm. And the stat that I'm going to share is that they found that 95%, 95% of our success or failure in life, in any area, is directly related to the people we spend the most time with. So you can look at areas of life and failure, and you look at areas of life of success. You can go break this down later. It's a great exercise. I want to challenge your audience to do an inventory of who they're spending time with at the end of this episode. I, if you would just spend 30 minutes this week, the week you heard this, I think it may be one of the great exercises you ever do. It's really important. But Harvard said that. I believe them. They've been studying people from birth to death for over 75 years. So the proximity principle says in order to do what I want to do, so fill in the blank, in order to do what I want to do, I've got to be around people that are doing it and in places where it is happening. So let's just stay in our lane, video creation, YouTube. If I want to be a successful YouTuber, I got to be around people that are successful YouTubers, and I got to be in places where it is happening. So it's a simple little formula, people and places. So you break the proximity principle down to one phrase. The right people plus the right places equals opportunity. The right people plus the right places equals opportunity. And it's pretty common sense. When I hang around the right people, guess what happens, Sean? They point me to other right people and connect me to other right people. Mm. And then I, and then they also go, you need to be in this place. You need to go to this church or this school, or you need to go hang out in this mastermind places, right? We're just having some fun here, very loose in the, in the way we define this. And so guess what? I go around, I go to some of those places. I go to a mastermind and there's, really right people in there 
And this just begins to cycle. And so I meet more of the right people. They point me to this right place. I get over there. I meet more of the right people over there. I see things I need to see. I experience things I need to experience. I get to do things that I need to do. And so that that's the simple formula. And I wrote that idea uh, after doing a podcast years ago. And a young guy asked me at the end of the thing, he's like, if you could boil down your success starting in broadcasting at 33, which is ancient, then you know my journey. I was really old to be starting in broadcasting. And 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 I was like, God, I can't boil it down to one thing that's kind of a you know god bless him you know young guy it's not a good question but let me honor the question i had had a bad attitude about it Mm. but then i thought about it and i just did a quick rewind of my journey and i went i was really good about getting myself around the right people and and i got in the right places and i was like bing and i worked for john maxwell for years and if I learned anything from John, John has a great way of summing things up. And I think the Maxwell, I give John all the credit for this and God, but the thought came to me. It's the proximity principle. And I pulled out my phone and I set it in my phone just like I said it today. And it hasn't changed. And then it became a best-selling book. And and it's about the right people in the right places. And And so when I keep showing up, I said this earlier, and I put myself around the right people. So I go work for Sean. I go work for Sean. Sean's going to pay me to get a master's degree in this work. I'm doing good work, but I'm learning. And one of the things I wanted to compliment you on, because I've watched your growth from afar, you are a human sponge. I think that's a fair description of you. You are a learner. Mm. And I think that if I can get paid to work for a popular YouTuber, it's the best thing I could do to eventually become a popular YouTuber. There's no guarantee. I hate people in the self-help space and our space that say crap like that. Yeah. But I can tell you this, popular that's relative successful yeah I'll, I'll, I'll guarantee that wow if you keep your head in the game and you don't quit and you do everything that you learn working for sean i can tell you this you will be successful so now it gets down to the question what's well, enough mm. am i trying to have as many subscribers as alex hermosi no i'm not i'm not that's a that's the wrong game And uh, so the proximity principle, what it does is it keeps us in a lifelong posture of learning. I love that. And as we land the plane, um, what's interesting to me about that is we, one, check out the show notes, pick up the book, amazing book. Thank you. To go deeper. Um, But when we think about the proximity principle, there's probably layers to it. If you could get to the right places, which could be an event. That's right. Because then that's going to be, that's one touch point. Buy a ticket to an event. Yes. Get to get on a virtual event, spend some time because you're learning, you're absorbing. But there's this big opportunity for W2s to perhaps consider, yep. could you look for another job, maybe take a pay decrease. Mm-hmm. But if you're judging success differently, you're like, no, I'm actually going, I'm, t- I'm actually not taking a pay decrease. I'm getting an increase because mm-hmm. of the environment I'll be in, yeah. and people I'll be around, what I could learn there, reverse engineered from the future that I want. Yeah. And you could apply the proximity principle where also my day job's stable. I love it. My W-2 is amazing. But maybe I can attach my side hustle to the proximity principle. Yeah. Maybe I start a video podcast. That's right. So that I'm interviewing. Why? Well, it's not less about the views as I grow it up, but it's more about the wisdom I'm getting getting as I'm- Here's a little phrase, okay? If I'm always learning, I will never worry about what I'm earning. I'm just telling you. Now, you're going to have to adjust what a rel- what, what, what's enough. And, 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 you know, the third largest group of net worth millionaires from our Ramsey study was, was teachers. The median salary in the United States for teachers is, I think, around $63,000, $64,000. So should they get paid more? Yes, that's not our discussion. But the issue is, is like they have learned how to make it enough. Mm-hmm. They've lived on less and they've invested. So you cannot get hung up in the amount of the dollar signs. It, that'll take care of itself. If I'm always learning, I'll never have to worry about what I'm earning. I believe that to my core, but that takes resolve. You got to be committed to learn and show up around people that are just crushing it. I mean, I'll tell you what, if I'm a creator and I, I don't consider myself a YouTube creator, I'm on YouTube, but I got brilliant people around me. And But but I will tell you, I am a content creator and you know this. My challenge to, to your content creators today is outside of work and family and exercise and some fun like you got you got to kind of carve all that out and even outside of the time you're spending creating if you aren't spending a portion of your week 
with intentional learning, you are limiting your growth. You cannot give what you do not have. And I remember talking to Graham Stephan about this. I mean, he was very open on my show about this, about his burnout. He was really open and raw about it. People were like, I can't believe Graham said that. But he was very vulnerable. And everybody gets to that point. We, we just can't give what we don't have. So, so if I'm creating, I better be learning because my creating is limited by my lack of learning or my limited learning. Mm. But the more I'm consistently learning, it's like going to the gym and I'm learning, learning, learning. Boy, it's going to affect me over here when it's time for me because creation on YouTube is the same as Picasso on a canvas. It's the same thing. We are allowing our brains and our hearts to align and then deposit like you know yes that's all it is yes and so boy if if i if i don't have something going in here and i don't have something going in here uh i'm limiting myself so i I hope that's an encouragement because i love your community and i i love that they're creating because to me it is it is them being who they were wired to be Ken Coleman, this has been an amazing conversation. I want you to shout out a few things, but Think Media Podcast, this is an episode to share because I think everybody, they know somebody that maybe is in a W-2, oh, yeah. thinking about a side hustle, and you shared so much value today. And of course, wherever you listen, like, rate, share, subscribe, and uh, really appreciate our community. But for your resources, mm-hmm. uh, let's shout it out. We'll put it all in the show sure. notes. And yeah. where can people connect with you? I definitely want people to get the proximity principle. Uh, lifelong leaders yeah. are uh, lifelong yeah. Readers, I said it wrong. Lifelong leaders or readers, learners. Okay. Yeah, you got uh, it. You know. That was right. Yes. And so, uh, but what else? Can, yeah. Where can people follow There's you? There's one think? resource that I want the audience to consider, and it's called the Get Clear Assessment. And it's at KenColeman.com. It's in the store. And it's a different kind of assessment. It is, it is going to measure for you and reveal to you what you do best, what you enjoy doing most, and what results motivate you. So those three things are really important. We call it talent, passion, mission in the assessment. But here's the deal. It's going to spit out for you a very detailed report and show you uh, how you are wired. And we've had hundreds of thousands of people take it. It works. So I'm not like this isn't some like, we. here's why I'm sharing that, that resource. And I'd love people to take it. Not only are you getting the detailed report in those three areas, what you do well, what you enjoy doing, and then what results motivate you, get you out of the bed. Um, it's going to put all of those results in one purpose statement. And I will tell you for creators, I think it's going to shine a light for those that are still trying to figure like, is this my, so it's not for everybody, but I would say, even if you figured it out, I think it's going to validate some things. And I think that purpose statement is worth the assessment cost. It's only 30 bucks for you to have on your creative wall. You look at that for you ever create every day and you see who you are. Because our greatness, Sean, lies in our uniqueness. And when we figure out that we were created to fill a unique role on YouTube and we are needed, then we must do it and we will stay the course. So I would recommend that resource because it'd take you 15, 18 minutes. And I think hold a mirror up to you as you've never seen yourself before, or maybe you have and you didn't believe it. And this wicked thing we call imposter syndrome is not a syndrome. It's just good old fashioned doubt. And doubt only comes to people, Sean, who are trying to move ahead. So creators, you're going to be flooded with doubt. And that's a good sign because that means that you're trying and you're creating and you're the people who sit on the bleachers of life never never experienced doubt. The people who take a shot at your videos, they're just elbow deep in popcorn. They're not out there doing it. So I, I that resource, I've poured my, my guts into that because I believe that that's what we ought to be teaching every kid in school. Figure out what you do best, talent, what you love to do most, passion, and the results that you want to put into the world. That's a sense of mission, and that's psychology about motivation. So that's a probably too long of a description, but I want people to, to feel my enthusiasm for it because it is a unique tool, and I think it helps them specifically as creators because they're out there on an island, and I'm there with you. That's what I do every day, and I appreciate that island. 
Um, but but uh, sometimes we need to be reminded that we belong on that island, that that's our island. Ken Coleman, so grateful for you. Thanks, Thank bro. you for so much value today. Think Media Podcast, like, rate, share, subscribe. Check out links in the show notes below. My name is Sean Cannell, your guide to building a profitable YouTube channel. Can't wait to connect with you in a future episode.